Whenever you're ready. You count down. Three, two, one. This is Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues, and uh, I'm with Bill Doyle and Sophie Kirsten. And, and our guest, of course, is uh, Laurie Garrison. We'll be talking about the Central Vermont Humane Society. Just say a little about yourself, Sophie. Well, we're really excited to have Lori here to talk with us about uh, the amazing work that you guys have been doing in the last few years with the Central Vermont Humane Society. And maybe um, can you tell us what the mission is for that, the new facility there? Mm -hmm. Well, the mission, uh, the official mission of the Central Vermont Humane Society is to protect and advocate for companion animals, to um, strengthen the human-animal bond, and to create a humane community. But all that means is that we, as an organization, is we're here for the animals and the people who love them in our community. And we try to help both four-legged and two-legged creatures. Mm. And is it for, um, how do you call that? Like when vets have an assistant dog, is that a part of your program as well? No, we're pretty. We're primarily an adoption center. Oh, okay. So we take in animals from the community and we find them new homes. Oh, okay. Um, that's our primary purpose in life. Uh huh. Well, it's a wonderful faci facility. The new location seems mm -hmm. that it's much more accessible for the public. Yes, I'm very happy. It's actually not that new. We've been there since 2009. Oh. But it's a beautiful facility. It's yeah. state of the art. Um, the dogs have a very nice kennel area, and the cats get to live in colony rooms, we call them, so that we have five different cat rooms, and three of the cat rooms have their own catios, so the cats can go outside huh? and hang out, and they can't escape, and oh. they love it out there. It's great. Oh, that's nice. They're very nice. happy. <laughs> Is it huh? located, located between East Montpelier and Barry? It's at East Montpelier on Route 14. Route 14. They moved it, Bill. Yes. It's no longer on Muddy Brook. No longer, no on, longer Muddy on Muddy Brook. Now it's at Route 14 South in uh, East Montpelier. Nice new little building. Go ahead. Um, how many animals does the Central Vermont Humane Society care for in, in the course of the year? In a year we care for over a thousand animals, which if you see our little building, we only can hold 16 dogs and about 30 cats. The fact that we can help a thousand animals a year is pretty impressive. Very. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Is that number set by rules? Is there a rule that govern that? There's no rule. All it, all it is is if animals need us and we take them in, and it happens to be about a thousand. Um, if it, there's more need, we're there. If there's less need, we're there. But it's usually right around a thousand. This year, I think we're at 1,100. What species uh, make up most of your population? A lot of people think that most of our animals are dogs, but they're not. 70% of our animals are cats. So oh. out of the 1,000 animals we take care of, 700 cats come to us every year and are adopted out. It's a lot of cats. My lot of cats. gosh. I know. A, a lot of them are feral, or are they, no. nope. they're, they're like pets. real pets? They're real pets, and uh, we adopt. Some come in, and we call them barn cats. Yeah. We call them um, ecological rodent control, so they'll go live in a barn because they don't really like people so much. Yeah. So they live in the barn, they're very happy, and they control all the rodents, and it's great. Uh, but for the most part, our cats come to us from the community. People's lives change and things like that, and they're cats that want to live in a home. Right. So we find them their new, loving place to live. Right, a home proper. Mm -hmm. And where do these animals come from? Mostly they come from our communities. So Central Vermont, we serve mostly Washington and Orange counties, but we also help out most of Vermont when it's needed. And they come to us from as strays. So if animal control, if a dog or cat is running around loose, they'll come to us as a stray. Or the community, somebody's life changes and they need to rehome their pet, so they come to us. So almost all of our pets, 70% come from Vermont. We transport up about 30% mostly puppies from the south. One thing that um, is New England has done very well is they're very into spay and neuter. So overpopulation isn't a problem here so much. Uh, so we're lucky enough that we can actually save the lives of puppies from South Carolina in particular and bring them up here and they're adopted like that. 
so, is so South Carolina in particular has a aversion to spay and neuter? Well, in the South in general and different parts of the country, but we have a rescue partner that we work with ah. that are very good and um, they do very good disease control and, and things like that. So we've been working with them for many years now. Uh, so there are, we call them our rescue partner. And, and so they operate as a branch for the Southeast we, or something like that? Well, mostly uh, one or two shelters in South Carolina where they work. Oh. Uh, but there's all kinds of, of need. All kinds of shelters in New England work with different shelters in the south. Some work with shelters in Puerto Rico. Oh. Uh, so there's different pockets kind of, of, of need. And like I said, New England, there's not really an overpopulation. So we can save lives from other right. parts of the country, and that's a great thing that we're able to do. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. It's pretty cool to see all these puppies come up on a truck. Oh, you wow. Know, and they've, they've gone to this long journey, and they come out, and they just immediately go, oh. And they're so happy to be home, you know. Oh. It's almost like they know right. that they're at the end of the journey, and now they get to be adopted into their into their new home. So that's one of my favorite parts. Oh, that yeah. sounds so nice. It is nice. Huh. I'm very lucky that we get to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mention some of your amazing rescue stories. Well, one of my favorite rescue stories was last April, not this past April, but the April before, we got a phone call that another shelter in another part of Vermont has a box of nine motherless puppies, newborns. Their umbilical cords were still attached. They were this big. So they called us, they said, we can't, we don't know what to do with these motherless puppies. Can you take them? And my operations director, Erica, says, Lori, can you take nine motherless puppies? I said, yeah, let's figure it out. So we had an hour to figure it out. Uh, we cleared out one of our cat rooms, and we built a whelping box, and we took care of nine other motherless puppies. We had to feed them every four hours. So all the staff at Central Vermont took turns. We had a midnight shift. We had a four in the morning shift, and eight of the nine survived. Aww. And that still, I'm touching my microphone, but that still makes me verklempt because it was so amazing to see these little helpless, vulnerable puppies that would right. have died otherwise. Right. And we were able to save them and adopt them. And now eight families have brand new family members that, that they love. And Aww. that's an amazing thing. Mm. So that's my favorite story. So do you end up taking home one or two now and then? I've already done that, not from Vermont yet. I have two rescue dogs of my own, and my husband has put the kibosh on any more. <laughs> so I have two dogs, and that's it. So I'm, I'm lucky that I know that the animals at Central Vermont are going to go to good homes, so I don't have to adopt them. <laughs> right. I know we're going to find them a great place. Oh. Uh, so my, my two dogs are spoiled rotten. And um, that's it for my family. Mm -hmm. Speaking of dogs, do the dogs get along well with the cat, with the cats? My yeah. dogs are. Some dogs do. My dogs do not. That's why we don't have cats. Mm. <laughs> but plenty of dogs. Our previous dogs got along with cats, and we try to figure it out at Central Vermont before you adopt. We could kind of tell if a dog will be okay with cats. Sometimes it's the cats that say, "No, no, no." Right. I, I want to be feline-only house. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I noticed that's a very specific part of the interview discussion that gets printed yes. in the paper. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yes. I mean, you know, you've got to be conscious of what you're dealing with. And yes. That's well, wonderful. Animals are very much like people. They're all individuals. So some one dog might like cats, another dog might say no, or a dog might like one cat, but a different cat, no. I don't like that cat. Mm -hmm. They're very much very much like people. They're individuals. They have individual personalities and needs and, and what they want in life. Mm. You, they're, very, they're very unusual. Yes. Let's talk some, about some unusual animals you do have. <laughs> well, our most unusual animal was actually an animal that we couldn't take. We do small companion animals. Basically, they have fur, so no birds, no reptiles. But one day, the animal control officer in Barrie picked up a chameleon it was walking down the sidewalk. Cool. Oh, in the middle of Barry, <laughs> he was about this big, beautiful animal. He was orange and green and yellow. And he had these spines on the top of his head that looked like they'd be prickly, but they were soft. 
mm. like rubber. You like an it. iguana. Yeah, like an iguana. All right. And uh, we actually had to find a very specialized home because it was a reptile. We, can't, we couldn't adopt him out, but we were able to find a reptile kind of sanctuary place for him to go live. But that was the most unusual, to think of this chameleon just strolling down the sidewalk in February, oh by the way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Uh, so that was that was pretty amazing. I've never s seen a chameleon before, so that was that was pretty cool. Did it change colors for you? No. Oh. He stayed very bright. We uh -huh. didn't try to change his colors. We figured he was too stressed out anyway. Right. So we tried to just calm him down, and uh, but he had very bright green and yellow and orange. It was beautiful. Oh. Beautiful animal. Not a pet though. Shouldn't really be a pet. You photographed and screened it. I did. I do have a picture. I don't have it with me, though. <laughs> I, I love it. those. Pardon. I love those stories, though, of like the alligators living in the mm. New York City systems, and uh, you yeah. know, you hear yeah. anacondas showing up in the neighbor's house. And Luckily, we don't deal with snakes or <laughs> just furry animals, and mostly furry animals. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. And. Go ahead, so what does it cost to care for so many animals? I mean, you like one animal might be there for a week or mm -hmm. ten months. Or that's right. We've had an animal with us for over a year. Uh, it, a lot of people are surprised at how much our budget is. Our budget. I just finished our next year budget is eight hundred and five thousand dollars. Wow. So for the a thousand animals we take, it costs approximately. $800 per animal just for us to operate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that's how expensive it is for us to do that because every animal that comes to us gets the care it needs and it also gets all the time it needs to be adopted. So if they need uh. to stay with us for a year, right. they stay with us. Right. And that's a fairly expensive enterprise. So $800,000 a year is what we budget. And do you guys give them shots and fix oh, them, yes. they get spayed or neutered, mm -hmm. or they get any care that they, like you said, any care they that they need. They get anything they need. Uh, in fact, that's one of our um, mantras, is that we go the extra mile mm. for the pets in our care. So once an animal comes to us, whatever that animal needs, we try to do it. In fact, we just had a little puppy come to us up from a transport, and she needed emergency life-saving bladder surgery. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but she would have died without it. Right. And, you know, the veterinarian called us and I said, yeah, you got to do the surgery. We'll figure out how to fund it. Right. But those kind of things come up all the time. And uh, because our commitment is to the animal, once they come through our doors, we need to do whatever that animal needs. Mm. And that's part of, the, part of the expense. But that's also when the community comes to adopt from us, right. they know that they're getting a healthy animal. Right. It is vaccinated, it is spayed and neutered, and it did get whatever medical right. or behavioral support the, the animal needed before it becomes a pet. And that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Can we discuss the cost? How do you raise the money? That's the hardest part. And I think that's the other thing I don't think the community knows is that we run at a deficit. Uh, we run over a $100,000 deficit a year. Wow. We are saved uh, by bequests or legacy gifts uh, from our supporters. But we need more support. Um, we, if the community believes in what we're doing, and I think the community does believe in what we do, oh, definitely. then uh, we need community support and we need more community support. Mm. Almost all of our funding comes from individuals. We don't get government money. We don't get anything from Vermont. Huh. Um, we get very little town money. Almost all the money comes from individuals, um, like Bill, who just made a donation at a Mountaineers game. <laughs> <laughs> to my uh, volunteer coordinator, Christina, thank you. Uh, but, uh, but gifts like that keeps our doors open. I'm thank you. I was pleased to do that. What? I tell him I was very pleased to do that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We are very appreciative. So, what, what would you want most people to know about the Humane Society? Well, what I'd like people to know is that we're here for them. We consider ourselves a strong, important resource for the community, and. We go the extra mile for animals, but we also go the extra mile for people. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that life changes all the time. I mean, just last week we had a woman who came to us and homeless. She had just become homeless. She said, I never thought in a million years that I would be homeless and I'd be standing here in front of you needing a place for my two cats. And she was in tears. Oh, I'm sure. And thank God we were there. Right. 
um, and we were there for her, and we d are there for, for our communities in Vermont. And I'd like people to, to know that we're here, that we're a resource for people, and, um, and that we need, we need their support <laughs> to be yeah. able to do that. So what about when, when I was a kid, people used to bring a box full of kittens to the <laughs> front of the Grand Union. Is that illegal now? Uh, <laughs> that was I, where we used to get our cats. <laughs> it's better to bring the box to the Humane Society so that we can make sure they're healthy and they get their right. shots and they're spayed and neutered. Technically, I don't think it's illegal, but it's definitely better to go through proper channels. Sure, and sure. And much better to adopt from a humane society or a rescue group that has done their due diligence. That is, they have vaccinated the animals, make sure they have their distemper and their rabies and all that good stuff to make sure they're healthy and make sure they're spayed and neutered so that we don't run into, an, we don't get ourselves back into an overpopulation problem. Mm. We don't want to go backwards. And so if people have a pregnant cat and they don't know what to do with the kittens, Call us. is that that's the proper channel to bring them to yes. you. Mm -hmm. Call okay. us first. Yeah. Call us first. We try okay. to make appointments because we need to control um, the population. Influx, sure. Uh, yeah. So, but yes, definitely call us. We can we can either help you keep them if you need want to keep them, or we'll try to figure out how to find new homes for them. Definitely. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, before we leave the program, if there's something you'd like to you get the last word, what would you like to say? Hmm. Come adopt an animal. We are currently, we have a lot of cats, we have kittens, and we have a lot of dogs that need homes. So please come. Uh, if you're looking for a new home, please visit Central Vermont Humane. Our website is updated in real time, so you can see who's adoptable. In fact, we have rabbits right now. We would love to adopt out some rabbits. Are they uh, fixed? <laughs> and to know that we, that we need your financial support in order to operate is important. Now, you guys just did a major fundraising, right, that was quite successful? Well, we did our Walk for Animals, okay, which was a huge, huge success this year. We raised $78,000. Wow. And even though we managed to raise $78,000, we're still running at a $100,000 deficit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an uphill battle. But uh, that's in Montpelier at the Montpelier High School, and that uh -huh. was in the first Saturday of June. Uh -huh. And I, I think it was over 200 people and they bring their dogs and their kids and they walk through town and oh. uh, it's our biggest fundraiser. So that was a huge success. Oh, and our next fundraiser wonderful. actually is also a lot of fun and that's called Fur Fest. Okay. And that's October 13th. Okay. And it's at the Granite Museum oh, in right. Barrie, which is a great venue. And it's a casual kind of cocktail hour with really good um, hors d'oeuvres from Delicate Decadence from mm. Barry, who makes delicious food. They're dangerous. Oh, they're very good. Yes, they <laughs> tear last them. year, and we're like, yeah, we're getting them again this year. <laughs> Excellent food. And we have a live auction and a silent auction, and it's a lot of fun. And it's at the Granite Museum, which is a beautiful so place. elegant. Uh, yeah. And that's October 13th, so that's okay. our second largest fundraiser. And is that, um, you buy tickets online, or you will you'll be able have to uh, buy tickets October, not October, August 17th, I believe, it'll be live on the website. Okay. So just keep an eye on our website, which is centralvermonthumane.org. Okay. Uh, and then we'll put that up there as soon as it's available to, to buy tickets. Cool. So that's a pretty fun event, so I hope lots of people come to that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you. in and talking with us. I've, I, um, I have neighbors who are big animal lovers, and so I'm yeah. always glad to hear about you know the the well-being of them and the care and you know the amount of attention that it actually takes to create a healthy mm -hmm. community of animals and that's right so i'm very grateful to you for that you. effort and work it's beautiful well thank you very much for having me yeah thank you. it's a lot of fun thank you for coming thank, in thank you Lori. thank you bill thank, thank you, you. Lori. thank you for inviting us